Hello, so I just upgraded to the 7900 XTX for VR, and here's all of my thoughts on it, some benchmarks, and along with if I'd recommend it to you. First of all, the reason I'm even upgrading in the first place is because I pre-ordered the big screen beyond. The resolution is a lot higher than the index, and currently my index struggles a little bit on 90 FPS for VR chat, which is the main game I play, so. Figured I should upgrade to get the full benefit out of the headset. Specifically, I went with the Sapphire Nitro Plus 7900 XCX because from the research I did, it seemed like the best air-cooled card I could get without doing a custom water loop, and I honestly just don't want to deal with that. <laughs> also, it was only $70 off of like any other air-cooled card I could get, so I figured let me just spend the extra money on it. Might as well. I haven't really seen much VR coverage, for the 7900 XCX that's recent, I've seen some when like the card first came out and people were saying it was rough, not recommending it. Apparently VR issues have been fixed I've seen on a few like YouTube comment sections, so I wanted to try it out myself. I've still heard some people have issues with it to the point where it's like unusable for VR, but like I said earlier, some people also say it works just great, so. One thing I'd also like to mention is the Radeon VR Discord server. I ended up finding out about it right before getting a card. Basically there's this whole guideline of stuff you can follow to try to get things working a little bit better, or if you have any issues, like what the cause of them might be. For example, for VR chat for a while, you had to change the video encoding for video players to work off your CPU instead of your GPU if you had an AMD GPU. Thankfully, it seems like you don't have to do that anymore because I think VRChat automatically enables the option if you have an AMD GPU, at least according to the patch notes. <laughs> Seemed to work for me. For benchmarking, both the 3070 and the 7900 XCX have the latest drivers installed. For my 3070, I specifically used NV Cleanstall since it's just what I prefer using and it runs a tiny bit better. When switching to the 7900 XTX, I also use ZDU to clean my drivers fully. For benchmarks, I'm gonna be running 3D Mark, OpenVR, which is a VR benchmark, and a few wor set worlds in VR chat. For VR chat, I'm also going to be running one public world and try to match up the player instance as closely as possible. For OpenVR and for 3D Mark, I also am going to be comparing stock settings to undervolt settings. I personally have a undervolt running on my 3070 and it's helped a little bit, so I figured to do the same to give a little bit more of a fair comparison.
Now that I've showed you the benchmark results, I wanted to talk about my experience so far using the 7900 XTX in general and for VR. First of all, the AMD Adrenaline software is great. I prefer it a lot more over the NVIDIA Control Panel and GeForce Experience. Both of those seem way more outdated compared to Adrenaline, and Adrenaline just allows you to do everything in one app, and the UI is clean. <laughs> My overall experience has also been very smooth switching from an NVIDIA card over to my 7900 XCX. The only issue I had when first setting up the card was my index ended up displaying as a normal monitor. So all I had to do to fix that was open up Steam VR and close it and it just fixed itself. One really odd issue I had was with Substance Painter. I was working on an avatar commission and I was just erasing one of the lines I drew and then it just glitched out really bad. Thankfully, just restarting the app fixed it though, and I haven't had it again. As for some cons switching over to the 7900 XCX, coil wine has been pretty noticeable in some games. If I set an FPS cap, it's just completely gone though, so that works for me. Personally, I can't hear it in VR right now, because my PC fan, my case fans are really loud. <laughs> Also, I've had some slight stability issues. If I tab out of a VR game and open up the Steam VR overlay, I stutter very bad. Like I drop to like half the frame rate at a minimum. Thankfully, just tabbing into my game fixes it though. And sometimes it, that issue doesn't happen at all. So I can still use apps such as Discord, OBS, anything like that fine. So will I be sticking with the 7900 XTX? I will be. Personally, it's worked great for me. If I run into any issues, I'll update you in the comments below, but so far it's been a very smooth experience. I also would recommend the 7900 XCX to anyone looking to upgrade from a 30 series card, but also does not mind tinkering around a tiny bit. For me, I know the process has been pretty smooth, but for some others it's been very rough. So I'd recommend still going in with those expectations just to play it safe. Another thing I'd like to mention is if you're someone that cares about DLSS, frame generation, or ray tracing, you're probably better off going towards NVIDIA. Specifically for DLSS and frame, re frame generation, both of those are not supported on AMD cards because it's an NVIDIA technology. And as for ray tracing, it just runs worse on these cards. It's not bad, but it's not as good. So if it's something you have on frequently and really care about, then I would skip on AMD. Personally though, I really don't care much about ray tracing and still usable if I want to turn it on. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll reply to you as soon as I can. Also, if you've liked this style of content, please let me know. I really enjoyed making it, and also this is something I'd like to do more in the future. If there's any topics you'd like me to cover, please feel free to let me know. VR related, game related, PC related, whatever it is. I'd also really appreciate a follow and a like on the video if you enjoyed. Thank you. Have a good one.